commonly women were raised to hand over financial responsibility Mm -hmm. right so we have that whether it's intentional unintentional i'm not here to debate that i'm not here to debate previous generations what i am here to debate is the fact that we can now choose to look at these beliefs that are somewhat indoctrinated Hello, Empower Nation. This is Empower Her Money Podcast. I am your host, Angela Duncan. And today I have Che Tali with us today. And she is a luxury business mentor and soul activator. I'm super excited to have her on the podcast today. And we are going to have so much fun with this episode. I can't wait for her to share her tips in business and money with you. Welcome, welcome to the show. Hi, Angela. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited. Yay. Awesome. Awesome. So why don't you start with your story? Tell us a little bit about your journey, kind of how you got to where you're at today. Sure. Of course. So I'm a huge fan of saying I Forrest Gump my way through many things, including entrepreneurship. And I use um, Forrest Gump because it's such a strong visual when you think about it. He never set out to do everything he did. He just decided one day, this is interesting and I'm going to run for it quite literally, right? Run, Forrest, run. And That's actually been my life journey in any aspect, but for sure, entrepreneurship. I would see something, I would be like, oh, that's interesting, and down the rabbit hole I go. And from that, a lot of trial and error, a lot of experience has been learned, and here we are today, and we get to talk about all of those things. I have started several businesses through um, through my history, so to speak. I, by education or university, my background is in molecular genetics and medical technology. So I've always had a love for science and for helping people. And how that's come into play now as an entrepreneur, I use more of the metaphysical sciences. So human design, hypnosis, subconscious reprogramming, um, gene keys, EFT, all of these quote unquote, new age sciences and helping entrepreneurs really step into their power so that they can deliver the message that they're here to do. You know, everyone, all of us, you yourself as a financial coach, empowering women to start to really understand that money, it's possible for all of us. Yeah. So that's kind of a short synopsis of how I've gotten here. Awesome. Awesome. So you talked a little bit about the science behind the mindset. So why don't we discuss um, maybe the limiting beliefs that some of the entrepreneurs might have around money? Oh, that's, you know what, that's such a fascinating conversation, actually, because I think yesterday, I was talking about entrepreneurship. In entrepreneurship, you meet so many different facets of your personality. You meet your strengths, your weaknesses, and you meet the unconscious parts of you that you didn't know were there and a prime example is actually money especially for women because we have been raised okay that's going to be a generalization let me take it back commonly women were raised to hand over financial responsibility Mm -hmm. right so we have that whether it's intentional unintentional i'm not here to debate that i'm not here to debate previous generations what i am here to debate is the fact that we can now choose to look at these beliefs that are somewhat indoctrinated and shift them so that as women as entrepreneurs we can step into our power and start to shift the old story a great one is money doesn't grow on trees Like it's literally printed on paper, (laughs) right? (laughs) Right. And so to move us forward. So there's so many limiting beliefs that pop up that, I mean, I wasn't expecting them. I don't know about yourself as an entrepreneur, but they were like, sometimes they're blaring in your face and other times they feel like, they feel like you're chasing your tail and you can't quite figure out what, what, why can't you get ahead? And oftentimes it's the mental blocks which is another way of saying limiting beliefs Mm -hmm. that we have that sometimes we're just not aware of, but it's the hurdle that we can't get over. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you talk about that, that mental block. um, And sometimes you have to get past that to really have that mind shift. So then if we were to think about that a little bit more and 
the early childhood is some of the things that we were taught that we have to kind of unlearn. So then how do we then take that information and have a more healthier um, relationship when it comes to money? Oh, so for myself, when I look at entrepreneurship, I use the lens of human design. We, okay, who we were raised to be and who we were actually designed to be, there's a disconnect. And it's because of the programming. Again, good, bad, ugly, it is what it is. You know, and a prime example is hustle culture. You just keep going, keep going, keep going. Well, some human design energy types you're not designed that way. So for example, I'm a manifesting generator. I can keep going like the Energizer Bunny. A projector who needs a lot of downtime, needs to have short births of um, productivity, and then again, go back and relax. Obviously that is not an Energizer Bunny, but they're pretending because they don't know that they're this Energizer Bunny and they can't figure out why, why they're getting upset why they're starting to resent their business, why they feel like a deflated balloon all the time. There's, they've not allowed themselves the space to come back and to relax, to rest, and to come back into their business. So yeah. a, a lot of that, we get to decondition, meaning we get to rewrite that story. And for myself, I use hypnosis. You get to bypass your conscious brain, which is only 5% of our mind. It thinks it's the boss, but the true boss is your subconscious mind. Where our beliefs sit, where our behaviors, our how we be in the world, all of that sits in there. And when we start to address it at that level, we can consciously make those changes because it's a choice. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I connected with the projector because that's me. And maybe perhaps- oh, okay the energizer bunny is attracted to me because it's opposite. But sometimes I will think about that and wonder why can't I just keep going full speed like they are. And then, you know, that negative thought process starts. So understanding that I am a projector and I do need my downtime and my quiet time and being okay with that. I really like that point of view too. That's really cool. I did not know you were a projector. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> I think okay. it's, that's more for my own intuition to say, Hey, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. But, awesome. Yeah. So but as a projector, it's true. You need that time of self-care and by self-care, I don't mean just bubble baths and massages. I mean, actually just sitting in your own energy devoid of people, especially with manifesting generators, our sacral is so strong or our generators you feed off of that which is great when we're in this kind of situation or in a mentorship situation, but then you want to step away from people like me and have your own, you just want to be in your own bubble. So just something to think about moving forward. Yeah. I like that. So acknowledging it and being okay that I need that downtime and, and know that, you know, I'm going to take that downtime and it's going to be what's best for me so that I can continue to move forward and be in my greatness. So I love that too. percent yeah. So one of the things that um, I saw on your Facebook page, you were talking about the inner BS radar. So that really caught my attention. Talk about that a little bit more. Yeah. So, okay. If we think of an iceberg, right? The, the top bit of the iceberg, that's our conscious mind. You can see it, you know, it's there. Great. Then it's 95%. The subconscious is beneath the water. So if we think of the water, as a filtration system, that's your critical factor, also known as the gatekeeper. It's what allows new ideas, new beliefs, new concepts, new curiosities to come into the subconscious. And what it does is, let's use affirmations as an example, because I think that would be really relatable. If you're sitting there every day writing, I am a... Um, I am a millionaire, which is quite common, right? Because everyone wants more money. There's a desire for money. I am a millionaire. I am a millionaire. And nothing is happening. It's because your critical factor, the gatekeeper, is calling BS on it. You are not a millionaire. And it knows it. So your belief system is like, why does she keep saying this? Like, And it puts up an invisible wall, right? But because it's definitive. You're saying, I am this thing. 
whatever it is for you. Maybe if maybe you're on a weight release journey, I am releasing weight easily. Are you though? So one way to start working around that and to start working with your gatekeeper, with your subconscious, I am someone who, because what that does is as simple of a tweak and ver- or words that is, it opens up possibility. So it takes mm-hmm. it from the definitive, I am this, to hmm, I am someone who. So that possibility, now your gatekeeper is like, oh, interesting. So it's not, it's not the alarms have not been sounded off. It's not shut down. It's open now. And it's it's curious also, like, oh, is she? So let's take money. I am someone who can earn unlimited money. Mm-hmm. Right? There's so much possibility in that. Now my gatekeeper is like, oh yeah, that's true. She is somebody who could do that. She hasn't done it yet, but it's there. It's we're open to having this um inner dialogue now. Then all of a sudden, perhaps you see my Facebook page where I'm talking about a, a way to make passive income. You might not have seen that before, but now, because the curiosity is there, the possibility has opened up, things start to come into our projection field, which speaks to this possibility. I know this sounds a little bit, is a lot of energetic principles, but it's so important because that's who we are at, at our core. We are energetic beings. So this vibrational shift, this is how we start. And this is how we work with our gatekeeper, this critical factor and our subconscious. Does that make sense? Yeah, I like that change in words because I'm a big affirmations person. I start my day, I journal. I not only set my goals down, but I I write them in a sense that I've already accomplished them. And so I understand like that gatekeeper telling me saying, nope, that's not correct, you know, because I haven't accomplished it yet changing the way that I'm speaking to myself and just putting in that I am someone who changing that allowing for my brain to get past that gatekeeper in order to open up my mind and possibility that I am going to achieve this goal so I really like how that is yeah or using the way you do write them I am thankful now that I right? Because you're giving gratitude in advance, like, hey, this is coming. Here's what I'm working towards. It's the same concept. What it's done is it's taken out that definitiveness and moved in, opened up that possibility. Hey, look at that. She's already thanking me for this. Great. Let's make this magic happen. So it's such a simple tweak, but it's so profound and it's powerful. And I like that you're talking about writing it down. When we write things down, literal pen to paper, It creates anywhere from 300, sorry, 3,000 to 4,000 new neural pathways. Hmm. That's that's how our brain connects with everything, right? When you type it out, only 30 to 40 new neural pathways. So pen to paper every day. And if you're already saying that it's done, I am so thankful that I accomplish blah, blah, blah. I am so thankful that I accomplished my financial goals my physical goals whatever they are give thanks in in advance you know i think through all of the world's religions there's some semblance of give thanks for everything Mm -hmm. and this is a prime time to really not only prime your mind but prime those neural pathways open up the possibility of your success and it's simple And that's the best thing. Like, I love practical ways of approaching life. And this is one of those situations. Yeah, simple, practical, easy, easier to implement, just a a little tweak of perhaps something that you're already working on. Yeah, 100%. And it's so wonderful to keep the openness, to keep that sense of curiosity, very much like a child, you know? Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right. Well, I have a fun question for you. Sure. Um, if you could have a super talent or a superpower, what would it be and why do you choose that? Okay, it's twofold. One, I would love to be Wonder Woman because hello, she's Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. And then on the back end of that, I would love to just be able to snap my fingers and travel anywhere in the world. No need for an airplane, no need for all of that. If I want to be in Bali, I could be in Bali in a minute. Um, yeah, those are mine. 
You too. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> well, I appreciate the information today. If our audience wants to get in touch with you, what is the best way for them to reach out? Oh, connect with me on social. Um, I'm on all the major platforms, or you can just visit my website, whatever is easiest. All right. So for those that may be listening to this and not watching the video part portion, um, do you want to spell that out for us so that they can find you? Yeah, sure. So head to my website and that has all my links. It's www.chaitalib for boy, D for David, ESAI.com, chaitalibdesai.com. Awesome. Awesome. I truly appreciate your time today. That wraps up another episode of Empower Her Money. I'm your host, Angela Duncan. Make sure that you are not just listening to this podcast, but you are taking those action items and implementing them today in your business and your personal life. And it will take you so much further. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.